Good afternoon and welcome to Discus's Auto Repair Source Nuts and Bolts. Today we're going to be going over our Auto Repair Source database and we are going to be taking you for a ride, pun intended, um, to see everything from looking at tire pressures to wiring diagrams, technical service bulletins, uh, so that you'll be able to get familiar with the database and to assist your patrons, students, uh, colleagues, and even your own family with some of this information. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to look first uh, today at uh, some of the characteristics of Auto Repair Source. It contains everything from service information, technical service bulletins, and recall notices. As you can see here, it does cover both import cars and domestic uh, and light trucks. You will be able to check out wiring diagrams, uh, locate fuses and the fuse panels, um, even find out um, the fuel tank capacity or the type of refrigerant a car may need. So there's a lot of information in this resource. Um, it does contain data for all of these different features for different specifications, tires, transmission, etc. as you see in this list. Um, so whether or not you're just a novice needing some basic information or maybe just needing to know a maintenance schedule of when the next time you need your tires rotated, all the way up to people that really do like to get in, get their hands dirty and get in and uh, replace components themselves. So the first thing you would do within the software is to select a vehicle that you would like uh, to access any of that information on. And um, we can go ahead and look now. The first thing you will do is to select your year, make, and model for your desired vehicle. And you'll see that's in the red box here at the top that you do that selection. Um, you do need to select the engine. Some of the cars only had one engine model, but um, you know, several cars have two or three choices, a V8, a V6, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then you would search within the search box, which you see here um, in number three, there's a search box to search directly uh, for an item on the vehicle or there's a browse list of topics. So again, those of us who aren't as auto savvy as we should be, maybe, uh, we can just simply view this menu and be able to work our way down to the information that we need. So you can locate a vehicle maintenance schedule by selecting the vehicle and then simply clicking on maintenance schedule from that drop down menu. And what you're seeing now are actually slides related to the database, um, just so that you can get an overview of what we'll be looking at when we go live here in a moment. So this, these first few slides are just going to be overviews of how you do the piece, and then we're actually going to go in and do some live demos. So this is what you would see. Uh, you would be able to uh, look at the maintenance, pull the maintenance schedule, and select either the mileage that's on the car. In this example, you see 6,000 miles in the red box on the right. Or you can search by normal service versus severe service. So, you know, if you're just had driven your car in uh, normal sense of the terms where you just, you know, live close to work, stay around the neighborhood a lot, maybe take a few road trips. But the severe service is going to be if perhaps you commute every day to work and you're putting, you know, 500 miles on your car um, regularly, that kind of thing. Just want to make sure you know that that is a, a, an or there. You either enter the miles and click search or you choose normal or severe service. It's kind of confusing at first, uh, that one piece. So then these are the results that you'll see. You'll actually see a breakdown. If you're looking for 6,000 miles, they'll show you uh, where on the car, what you need to do. Do you need to get the tires rotated? Do you need to check your serpentine belt? Do you need to, um, you know, 
change the air filter, that kind of thing. So this is information that you will get normally from your car's manual in the, in the uh, glove compartment. Some people have lost that. Some people have bought a car secondhand and never had one. Um, so again, your patrons may be uh, uh, at any part of, of those situations. So we also have information about parts and labor. Many people ask, where does this information come from? It is powered by the automotive experts at Motor. Uh, auto repair source includes part numbers, diagrams, and pricing. Um, and it also mentions down at the bottom that their labor times are actually industry standard based on the flat rate hour. Um, so when you get that information, you at least kind of know where it's coming from. So let's say you want to search for parts and labor. You're going to uh, follow those same pieces, uh, the first two, find the vehicle, locate parts and labor on the left-hand side of your menu. And then you're going to be given some uh, drop-down uh, menus to be able to choose the, uh, the, the section of the car, maybe different components of the car, etc., to be able to drill down and get the information that you need. So you can also see searching for parts and labor here. Um, after making your selections, the parts or labor information is displayed below. So you're going to be able to see, for instance, not only what um, the motor time for it should take to actually replace the part, the original factory time that it took you see there and then the skill code you see the blue B in the center that's going to be uh, what level of skill the um, the automotive technician needs in order to to complete this repair so if you're told you know we have to have our head um, most expert labor person here to do this it's so complicated and, and you find out mm, maybe that's not so true um, for this particular component so that can give you a little information there. You can also pull the technical service bulletins of the vehicles, of most all of the vehicles, I will say. Uh, some of the really recent 19, uh, 2019s, 2020s, and some of the older 1975s, 77s, um, you might not be able to get everything that we're showing here. But for the majority of your vehicles, you will. Um, notice when you do a technical service bulletin search here on the left, you can either search directly for a particular piece of uh, information or you can browse and I will demo that for you as well. And then you can also print from Auto Repair Source and you do have several options as you'll see here in the red box next to the printer icon. You can either print the text only, for instance if a person is replacing uh, you know, a windshield wiper blade and they just need a step one, two, three how to do it. If you need a more, maybe you're a more visual learner, more visual person and you prefer to uh, print the figures that come along with it, such as the images that you see here, you have that option as well. And you also have some great options uh, for simply enlarging the view on your screen. Uh, one of the beauties of this software is you and your users are going to be able to take it out on an iPad, a tablet, right out by their car, uh, and be able to actually utilize this resource um, um, directly looking at, at this information from their screen. So they might not even need to print it out. However, if you have a patron coming in um, to your public library and they need that information, certainly you could print that out for them. So you can see here as a close-up uh, of the instructions, you could print just the text or the images. You can also look at your vehicle search history. So if you've looked into several vehicles here, um, you will be able to kind of track what you've already viewed. And one of the important pieces of this database that, that keeps it um, um, really on top of things is the, the motor um, people really do want to hear your feedback. So if you're finding that you need more information or maybe something's not clear or perhaps um, you think something needs to be updated, when you're actually looking at a vehicle, you can go into the menu in the top right with the three little menu bars and you can click on um, feedback there that you see in the top right hand corner.
to do that as well. So I'm exiting out now of my PowerPoint and I'm going to go live into the system for you to be able to um, kind of follow along and watch this uh, with me here. Um, let me see if I can straighten up this frame. So um, where you can start, um, you can start with your own vehicle just to get familiar with, you know, a car that you already little, know a little about just so you can get used to it and then be able to um, easily help others, family members, your patrons, your students, even faculty. Some of you at the technical colleges that have an automotive training uh, program, uh, this might be definitely a good, uh, a good resource for them as well. So I'm just going to go in uh, now and pick a Subaru Legacy Premium here. And I'm going to look on my left. This is where you have the option to look at uh, um, just the list that is available here. So if I go through and I want to check fluids within the vehicle, uh, maybe I am interested just in finding out uh, about maybe the cooling system, Maybe I need to know what um, what uh, type of coolant I need for my car. So you can see what comes up here is the ethylene glycol coolant that you see here. So I know that much. I know that it needs to be uh, at a, uh, the maximum capacity is 2.1 gallons. So that's helpful. Uh, maybe I need to look at the fuel tank capacity. I'm going on a trip for the summer and I kind of want to say, okay, you know, how far will my tank get me? Uh, before I need more gas. So if I wind up in Arizona in the middle of a desert, uh, I kind of plan ahead. So if those are some of the basic things you can look at. Notice too for your tires here, uh, the tire and rim size that you'll find here along with your tire inflation um, pressures for the front and the back those kind of things. So those are going to be just generalities that your patrons may be find useful. Um, also, you can look under the maintenance piece here for specifics. And we mentioned before in the slides the maintenance schedule. So the maintenance schedule is where you can then go in and say, you know, I have 12,000 miles on my car. I'm going to uh, look by uh, miles here and just kind of search to quickly find out what all I need to make sure I have a heads up that I am taking care of. I'm checking my brake linings, I'm looking at my power steering system, etc. Um, notice I did mention before that the print icon here on the right does allow you to print um, sections and I probably didn't need to actually click on it, but you can see that you can print out um, sections of the information there. Um, then you want, may want to get a little bit more detailed. Um, uh, perhaps you want to check out some of those technical service bulletins that we were talking about. That is where you're going to find uh, your uh, recall information and also any technical service bulletin that has come out for your model of your car. If they, you know, find out um, that there's something wrong with the oil seal or that kind of thing, this is where you would find that information as well. Notice there are two ways. You can either search directly in the search box on terms or again you can um, click on your uh, different topics that are already pre-listed here. So if I kind of want to just want to browse this technical service bulletin and kind of see what's going on, uh, changes to the brake fluid, proper grease application, etc, etc, that's all going to be available to you. One of the things, I think the only thing that really bothers me about my Subaru is there's a lot of wind noise that's going on with it. And um, so I can just click on search the technical uh, bulletin here and type in wind uh, or wind noise, wind something, and kind of see what comes up. So there have been five technical service bulletins, in fact, about wind noise in this particular model of the Legacy. And you can see we have wind rushing um, or fluttering sound from the pillar area. We've got wind rushing from the front door sash area. So when you click on that technical service bulletin, it's going to tell you what models, what years. Sometimes it'll even tell you VIN number ranges 
uh, that 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 affects that model affects and it'll kind of tell you what needs to be done if there has been a service uh, fix for that and also if there's actually been a recall um, so this is something that you know you might want to just print this out take it into your service dealer and say you know I got a lot of wind noise what is this something you can do for my car here so that's kind of useful to be able to do um, a search that way Again, you can just uh, scroll through the topics that are already listed here. Um, so if I click on automatic transmission coolers, torque converter here, for example, and I scroll through my list, notice I see a bright red box here that says recall next to my transmission oil leak. Um, one uh, good way to use this information is let's just say if I had had work done on this particular piece here they're talking about the particular section of the vehicle here uh, the transmission oil leaks if I had had work done on my transmission and then I find out oh there was actually a recall on this I can then take this information back to my service provider and say you know I paid my $500 to get this transmission oil leak fixed but um, I realize there's actually been a recall on it and you can go through the procedure to get your money refunded because you have actually repaired something that was a known issue and an actual recall had been established for it. So that's something uh, for you to think of there as well. So let's go back up, see where it says select new vehicle. We're just going to go to select new vehicle. I'm then um, going to choose another one. I'm going to choose a 2018 uh, Jeep. We're going to look at a Jeep Cherokee here. Uh, we'll just do the Cherokee Limited. And then again, um, if you do have to uh, select a particular engine, we have the similar information on the left, so that's good to know. It's very familiar. Let's just say that you um, maybe you're having trouble with a wiper, uh, like your rear wiper fuse, for instance. You know, where do you begin to be able to uh, find out where that fuse is located? So you would first go, you could actually there, there you'll find the more you use this that there are several ways to getting to the same things. You can go under specs to find a lot of things there with specifications. Um, you can just jump right into wiring diagrams. So if I go into my wiring diagrams here, I have that same search feature or system and component feature. So uh, if I just want to uh, go into a search and do the search there, I can say rear wiper or I can just say wiper fuse and let it actually do the work for me to locate that information. So let me try again to do this. There we go. So you can see there's all kinds of wiper charts and everything you kind of go through each piece of this. Um, the wiper, the body and accessories, steering column, the wiper front. Ah, okay, so this is for the motor for the rear wiper. And this is the electrical distribution relay for the wiper. So if I, um, let's see, let me look uh, back to the top. So let's just say I go into electrical distribution display and I pull that up. This is actually going to tell me where a lot of the fuses actually are. Notice you do have a plus and minus to be able to enlarge that once again, um, as large as you might want it on your iPad or your screen. Notice when you go to print, however, um, they do give you an option to fit to page if you want the whole chart or to print as shown if you just want it to be um, dialed into a specific area of the chart when you print it out. So as I scroll through here and I look through some of the descriptions for the different pieces, I do see rear wiper here is F24 um, there. And I can then take that over to my diagram to be able to locate that. And you can see the F's, F ranges are here in the center. So I can not only know what kind of fuse it is that I need, but I can actually know where that fuse goes. So for some people, it's simply going to Advanced Auto, picking up the fuse or ordering it online and being able to, you know, really get under the hood and replace those fuses. 
So that um, is another uh, benefit. Uh, some people that are even more advanced might want to look at the wiring system pieces such as the brakes, the engine, the HVAC. So they're going to be able to go in specifically and look for, you know, um, the brakes and the relays and that kind of thing. So again, depending on your need uh, or the needs of your patrons. And then finally, we're going to look at, um, we're going to change our uh, vehicle again. We're going to do select new vehicle, let it reload. Uh, this time we're going to look at an older one. Perhaps a patron has an 87 Ford Mustang. So we want to do a Ford Mustang uh, GT, actually. And look at this vehicle. So let's just say they're trying to look for a part uh, for... Um, Maybe their parking brake. They're needing to look for a parking brake part. So they could click on brakes here. Uh, we can look at specifications. If they want to look there. But we could also just go directly into parts and labor. So we can look at the part and choose what it is we're exactly looking for. So we're looking at brakes. Within that group, we're looking at the parking brake. And then if you have more specifics to give, maybe they know it's a rear cable. Um, they can then find out exactly what part number that they're looking for here and again order it online or try to get uh, try to get that piece uh, uh, that part uh, accessed so then you can do the same thing with this model if you do want to go somewhere else you can go to specifications etc notice labor is also here Again, for some of the older vehicles, um, it might not be able to tell you the time and expertise it takes uh, to work on a particular component. Uh, on this particular one, it does tell you uh, about how much time it took to assemble in the factory and about how much of that flat rate hour time uh, motor provides there. Also, you'll see the B that I mentioned before in the slides requires a person with limited skills wherever simpler measuring tools are needed. So again, you wouldn't have to have, uh, you know, a master mechanic necessarily to put this thing together. So whenever you're looking at your charging or you're getting quotes for things, you can kind of get, you know, get an idea of how long something should take. So again, on this 1987 Mustang GT, we can look at the specifications for it here. Um, we can check out the AC specs and find out quickly um, like what kind of refrigerant it needs here. It requires R12 refrigerant. Um, so again, that would be useful as well. So I think we've given you a good overview today of what you can find in Auto Repair Source. Um, you are always welcome to contact the Discus office if you have further questions. Uh, and we will be looking forward to seeing you again in a future webinar. Uh, thank you very much for attending and um, checking out this database today.